Warning, this podcast does not contain any more calls home. E.T. E.T. left. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCNA TV podcast for Once Upon a Time, Season 5, Episode 18, Ruby Slippers. I'm your host, Dom. With me, we have Nikki, Cleo, and Rachel. Yep, we're here. How's it going? We're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're I don't kind know what's happening. <laughs> I just, I'm along for the ride. We, we, weird. we had a crazy <laughs> pre-show. We had a lot, of, YouTube's having some issues tonight, so we're, we're actually live on, on Twitch for for. The, the, the time, time being. being but we're still paying attention to youtube chat in in our live event so that's uh, a lie we're ignoring you all no no we are not oh, we, no I never i'm not ignoring any of you cleo is lying tonight <laughs> lying liar yes <laughs> Sanchez. She, go go have some pez um <laughs> so uh what you guys think of this episode oh my god where to start right <laughs> Yeah, really. Um, all, so, all the crap going down. Yeah, so you want to start with with uh, Dorothy and and Ruby? Yes. I mean, we might as well. Okay. Get well. that get that out of the way. Um. They're not uh, who I shipped, but it's yeah. not like horrible. I'm, it's not I'm like not against oh my, it. No, I'm not against it. it. Wasn't what I expected. No. Mm-hmm. It was it, and it was, was awesome. kind of nice. It was kind of nice. Mulan did seem too broken up about it, which was nice. She well, I don't really think Mulan him. was ever really in love with Ruby. Yeah, no. no. So, well, no. I mean, we always ship, we shipped them, and we were like, what? and I thought there was a little something between them. We but... were projecting. Yeah, I just want Mulan. Well, to be happy. <laughs> when we originally heard this season that we were gonna get um, a uh, lesbian uh, c- uh, couple on the the show this year, yeah, thought it was Mulan. Yeah, we we all instantly jumped at Mulan. Now, I'm not saying that. The uh, Dorothy and and Ruby are a bad pairing, <clears throat> no. But I do agree with most of the fan base going, what? Where did it come from? Yeah, and it happened way too fast. Yeah, they showed us where it came from. No, I know they showed us where it came from, but right. So my my issue with this is, um, Dorothy goes into a sleeping curse after knowing Ruby for you know maybe all of a day. Well, we yeah. don't know how long. Really, it, it, I mean, it felt like a day. Yeah, it, it was about like a day. day. But you never know. And like, true love's know, kiss is gonna wake her up after a day. That's my issue with it. Well, so. we don't know how long. I mean, they they showed her leaving, but we don't know how long between the time she left Ruby and Mulan to the time when she had the sleeping curse. We don't know what the time span was. Right. Well, I think love is different for everyone. Well, yeah, true, true. And they just happened to fall in love in a day. It's not true for everyone. Yeah. As we've seen in the show and in real life. Most yeah, of the time, it, though, it's... But it happens. It can happen, but most of the time, you're not going to have true love. Like, love at first sight, kind of. But but here... And I don't think it was love at first sight. No. Mm-hmm. No. Not at... You know, she was holding a crossbow to her, you know? It's like... Mm. Not instant for a sight. But here's the thing, because you can like someone... Yes. And then over the course of a while, f- fall in love. But if if they have the they have magic, and magic showed them this is true love. If it weren't for magic, they might not have found out that they were really in love for a while. Like they could have just been living with this feeling, and one day wake up it's like, oh wait, I love you. Okay, cool, we're good. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. That's, like, magic, magic <laughs> has you know given them the confirmation. That is one hundred percent how it works. You just wake up one morning, well, no, get no, kissed, no, and boom, realize. true love. No, no, sometimes you realize you've been in love for this whole time, and now you realize you're in love. Like, okay. It happens sometimes. But I do love their tam- I mean, when they go back to Oz, it says, some time ago. I'm like, well, way to narrow that down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. We're already having a hard time with the timeline as it is. No. <laughs> no. Really? I agree. I so, just stopped trying to fit things in. I'm just like, okay, this happened. I grabbed uh, the the whole internet's been going nuts off of it. We actually even had, uh, you know, Lee Lee Silver and Chat has been waiting to talk about this uh, 
couple he's popped into a couple of our other shows and he's like i can't wait for the once upon a time podcast and i'm really actually upset that youtube's not working to to be able to have the full live experience with everybody but luckily yeah. they're still posting into the event they're still chatting and lee says that um he's he's not homophobic but he doesn't understand the pairing um ruby is a character for the first two years wearing hello sailor outfits with, with an attitude that went with it as in you know, she came across straight this whole time. But that doesn't mean that she can't be bi. And it's not... It's not about dicks and vaginas. It's this person... Yeah. She fell in love with this person. Right. And yeah. this person happens to be a lady with boobies. I mean, that's just how love happens sometimes. Yeah. No, I get it. But, see, the I pulled three tweets that, that I, I found uh, while browsing the interwebs. Um... I don't agree with all of them. I agree with one of them. And let's see if you guys could pick out the one that I agree with. Let's see. Um, number one is, like this. this was the saddest excuse for representation I've ever seen in my life. All right. That, that's the first tweet. The second tweet is, whoa, really lame. All of those fans who wanted Mulan to find happiness? Nope. Plus, Ruby was with nothing but guys season one and two. And finally, the third one is, it was horrible. They'd known each other for five minutes, and they share true love's kiss. It's so rushed and forced. Now we'll never hear from them again. This is not representation at all. They could have done so much better. I'm so upset. I guess it's the third one. Yes. I'm guessing it's the third one, yeah. yeah. I 100% agree with that, because they built this up, and then yeah. once has a habit of putting, you know characters in in some kind of story like this and then they disappear and we don't see them again that i agree with yeah yes. that the fact that we might not see them ever mm. or for a very long time because this happened with aurora and philip it happened with ruby oh, they're gone okay <laughs> bye it happened this, with ruby herself this is very true multiple times it, you're right it happened with ruby and that's the part i'm i'm mad about yeah. i mean i don't think it's fair to say that this isn't representation because there are plenty of people who go through their life in straight relationships and then, you know. Get married. They get married, have kids, and then they realize 20, yeah. 30 years later that they're gay. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's fair to say it's not representation. Yeah. It might not fit your bill, but it... And to say that some someone was dressed a certain way... Mm-hmm. Dressed a certain way, saying, yeah. oh, well, if she's dressed this way, then she has to be straight. That, that that doesn't make sense because I've seen and well living where I live in Portland, you can't I mean you can't go down the street and say oh that person's gay that person's straight right. just by the way they look because they can look both they look they can look exactly the same they can be dressed exactly the same that's a, so that's I mean with New York maybe that I mean just the way Ruby liked to dress that could be just the way she likes to dress is like you know like a fifties pinup basically that's what she dressed like. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean she she's straight. Yeah. Needless to say, it was not the the lesbian relationship we were expecting out of the show. No, no, it no. wasn't. Um, and yes, uh, Mulan is is still, you know, sitting there in the wings, and it's just like I felt really bad for Mulan this episode. Like I did too. Because because but... she's gone through all this stuff with Aurora. Right and and having to let that go and she's sitting there and she's like helping Ruby out and you know maybe we don't know for sure but maybe you know Mulan's had these hopes of you know of of Ruby this whole time spending time with her and everything and then Ruby who has never shown interest in uh, a female up until this point meets Dorothy and what seemingly five minutes later falls in love with her disappears to go you know look for her ends up in the underworld comes back and and kisses her and wakes her up and then Mulan's just kind of like sitting there going but we're yeah. all assuming that Mulan had feelings there's no evidence even though her no. facial expression no I know but I'm just saying even she was acting in this episode she didn't seem to be feeling that towards Ruby. And no. when Ruby sat down, it was a very friendship moment. She's like, oh my god, you're in love. You have to say it. You have to tell her. Like, I've made this mistake. And I don't right. think there was anything really sad about it for Mulan. Well, it's not even it's just that... Mulan... It's not even the fact that Mulan may have lost Ruby, because that's not even the point that I was making. But it's more of everything that Mulan's been through and then watches somebody else close to her fall in love. Yeah. And Mulan's just sitting there going, well, I'm left out again. Not necessarily th that she wanted to be in that relationship, 
but she wants a relationship. I don't think that's necessarily true either. She didn't seem upset. But she seemed happy for she them. She happy for her. I, I kind of maybe... get like a, a Finn and Jake thing. Not because Ruby is the dog. Or a wolf. <laughs> wow. Because, I was because say, they're like adventure. Yeah, they're, yeah. Just, they're, they're adventure friends. buddies. You know, they're the be- They like seem like best adventure buds, and you, they they support each other no matter what happens. I don't. I don't see. I mean, at the very beginning when we first saw Mulan, Mulan and Ruby interact, yeah, it seemed like they had chemistry, but it could just be a friendship thing. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I think enough times passed between what happened with her and Aurora that mm-hmm. she's healed a little. And yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. I I just don't like the whole. We've only seen Ruby with guys, so you know, what is this coming from? Well, I I hate that. I just hate yeah. that. Um, I hate when people say that because it's like, why why are you pigeonhole, pilly, you know, putting them in this box when they don't necessarily have to be in that box? Yeah. There's no reason. It could I come agree. out nowhere. She could have just like. Christy said she fell in love with the person. She didn't fall in love with the gender. Because that's definitely what it was. She said, like, I've never felt this way about a person before. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's what happened. She fell in love with the person. The person Mm -hmm. happens to have a vagina. Yeah. All hell vaginas. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Throwing up deuces over there. Um, Yeah. So, I don't know, they spent some time looking for Ruby's pack in Oz. Like, why, why do you think her, her wolf pack could be in Oz? Her nose there. I don't know. I don't think they were. I mean, I'm not that's sure. exactly that what they said they were doing. Well, that's what she said. No, no, no. But, I mean, she did, she smelled them there, but she goes, I don't have their scent anymore, and I doubt they were even here. Yeah, so. she might have just been chasing nothing, like. She might have thought she had a scent, but it wasn't anything. It was magic. It was I was going to say that. It was fate guiding her towards Dorothy. Mm. <laughs> or it was Toto. She was smelling was Toto. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Smelling Toto. Toto. Toto looked kind of mangy. It makes sense. Yeah. I like their nicknames for each other. Wolfie and Kansas. It was great. It was so cute. I like that uh, um, Ruby was referencing uh, Mulan's uh, book and uh, movie. I don't know if it was Mulan's necessarily, if we're, or if it was uh, Oz's. I think they, yeah, there. I think she was talking about Oz. Yeah, and she's like, this plan is supposed to be more musical. Yep. <laughs> it's more musical. And that's how she was able to recognize Toto, you yeah. know, from it's a tiny little dog in yeah. Oz. Oh, I know. I think I know this guy, Toto. Yeah. yeah. So. <sighs> well, and also gave us a little kind of like what happened after she got back no one believed her and yeah. no one believed Dorothy and you know they wanted to commit her so kind of gave that a part it kind of rang a Adam. little bit of uh of Wonderland yeah, yeah that's that's what I um, thought of right away too was Wonderland with Alice cuz they cuz she went back they, to Victorian oh, she England she did get committed yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah she actually um i think i can't remember if return to oz i haven't read the book in so long um if they did try to do that, I can't remember. I, think, I want to say that they did. They didn't believe her and know that. But I can't remember if, if they did actually try to commit her. Mm-hmm. So I want to know how she got back. That's what I want to know. Um, they don't really say. It, it seemed, well, she had the slippers, right? Yeah, it yeah, seemed to be the silver ones. slippers that uh, Zelina stole. We saw that at, at some mm-hmm. point. But, I mean, why did she go back? I mean, there was... No right. I mean, I mean, we had a very, yeah. very interesting theory um, last week in uh, our our Once Upon a Time video by uh, by Sally, who said that um, she thought that uh, Zelina's daughter is actually Dorothy. Yeah, wrap your head around that one for a minute. Travel. Right, because now we saw Zelina um, collecting the time travel ingredients, right? She got the Scarecrow's brain, you know, and, and stuff like that. Oh my God. So she, it, it's possible. I don't want to throw it out. Blending it, of the generations. I can't handle it. It's, it is a crazy theory. And, and so Sally had said, um, um, she goes, they never gave 
Zelina's baby a name. And at least three yeah. times last week's episode, they mentioned her not having a name. Yeah. Um, oh, no, three times two weeks ago, the episode, mm-hmm. they mentioned not having a name. Uh, then the comment Zelina made to Dorothy about what happened to you in Kansas and the time travel spell burn. It's just something that she, you know, it was crazy theory that she had going around and she shared it uh, on last it's week's al- video and I'd like it. It's almost as crazy as Peter Pan being Rumpelstiltskin's father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Almost that crazy. It's almost that crazy, but, you know, it's it's just crazy enough it could work. Yeah. I like Especially it. Especially with the, the time travel thing. It's hurt in my head, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because <laughs> if she's got the, the scarecrow, you know, Tim Man, the courage, you know, all that from the lion, and, you know, put I it all know. together, and then yeah. thinks the spell doesn't work, uh, she, maybe <laughs> she pulled Dorothy from the future instead of the past. Or maybe... The, the ingredient of innocence, so a baby, no. wh- what doesn't consume the baby, but does send it back in time. That's interesting. I mean... Like it's just I, unstable. So. When you said it, I thought that to protect um, Dorothy, they take her as a baby back in time and give her to Auntie Em. And, they could do that, too. Yeah, that that's what I... That's where my brain went when you said that the first time. Yeah. So... I mean, it's it's yeah. possible. There's all sorts of crazy stuff that they could do with it. It's time yeah, travel. Just, yeah, and especially since, you know, Robin's been trying so hard to keep her safe. Yep. Okay, you guys, I haven't had coffee for two weeks. This is just cool. this is, this You haven't had coffee for two weeks? No. And it's Dang. just hurting my head. I'm just sitting there going, I'm not I'm trying to wrap my head around it, and it's just not working. <laughs> it's, no. It's possible, like, no. though. It is it's, possible. It's quite possible, but I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it. No, so, don't. Let's not. No, please, no. So what did you guys think of uh, Auntie M? Uh, she was adorable. For the She's five seconds we saw her. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I like that she was the competition. That was hilarious. Maybe mm-hmm. think of Granny's she, diner. Yeah, yep. she'd have That's what too. Granny would be doing if she was down in the underworld. She'd be doing yeah. exactly what Auntie yeah. M was doing. Yeah, it's granny and aunties. Yeah. So funny. Welcome yeah. to aunties. But, uh, you know, they had this brilliant idea that maybe uh, they could put True Love's Kiss from Auntie M into the bottle and, you know, just like uh, the, the breath of the living. Yeah, they could mm-hmm. maybe bottle a kiss and, and it would work. And it's definitely an interesting theory, but I knew from the whole time the way the episode was going, I, I knew it was Ruby. You know, even before oh, the yeah. ending when... when Snow like approached her and is like, yeah. "I've been your friend for a long time, Ruby." You know. No. <sighs> well, what I thought originally was that Auntie M would kiss uh, Ruby. Ruby and the Ruby would have to kiss Dorothy. She'll be smooching too, ladies. Hmm. But you know what? Well, I cool. mean, Zelina. As wicked as she, as she did it seem happy with what Hades did to Auntie M almost, even though, you know, he, she was just like, yeah. He's like, I did it for you. It's like, and she's uh, like, what? Okay. Oh, I'm God. Dude. Still not convinced. I think Hades is playing her, and as soon as she folds and says I love you, he's gonna just like do yeah. something with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel well, like Well it's not gonna be and it's not so gonna be an I love hard. you. It's gonna be the kiss. Oh yeah, no, exactly. You know? That's that's what this has been about since the beginning of Once Upon a Time. It's true I love's kiss. See her kiss him because she really loves him so she kisses him <clears throat> even though he doesn't love her, but, but she loves him. Yeah but and but he becomes human. But uh uh they, they said it this episode, true love is a two-way street. It won't right. work if the other party doesn't love you back. Right. Uh, I want to see so Zelina kiss him and him... I going to get out of it if it is a play. I want to see him kiss him and him get infuriated because it didn't work and blame her for it. Ooh, dang. That's what I want to see. I want to see some Poison Ivy thing happen where she kisses him and he just dies. Oh, oh yes. Interesting. Yeah. But you see, if it's all you know, a ruse. Like, if he's playing her, then I don't think it's going to turn him human because that was what he said. That's what he told her. So obviously, if he's playing her, that's a lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, it could go either way, really. <clears throat> he's not. He's not showing any of his hands right now. No matter what he's doing, even I mean, they they've written it so well that he's not showing his hands. So it's hard for you to yeah, see what true. exactly he's doing. But we've seen him <clears throat> be desperate. He does not want to lose souls. He's made that no. clear, and he's just desperate to keep control. That's yeah, what. So. That's all we've seen, really. Mm-hmm. With any certainty. Yeah. Everything else is a total. Nope, we don't know. Here. We don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> I don't know, and but he definitely doesn't want to hope in the underworld. And he destroys, orders the destruction of the the phone booth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I'm like, why did you have the phone booth in the first place if you weren't wanting people because to no have hope? Because no one knew for sure if it worked. So no well, one did it. And here's also the thing: Hades didn't make the underworld. The underworld was around from the beginning of time, and Hades just. just- Got stuck Copied. with the job of looking over it. Yeah, but he was well, the one that made it look like Storybrooke, so... Yeah, but there was probably a way to call up to the world before then, and it just took yeah. the shape of a phone booth when he made it look like Storybrooke. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, Which we're uh, not even sure that that's what... Like, if Hades is lying about everything, we're not even sure that that's how it happened. It could have looked like Storybrooke for all of time, and... No, because that's what that's what someone said when they first came down. It's like, well, someone modeled our town after hell, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Hades could be lying about everything, which is what I actually think is happening. <laughs> could be. I don't know. Don't know. He's, he is. Well, no, All he's not the devil. That... I mean, yeah. we don't even know for sure that that was Hades that shut the phone booth down. That's only what Cruella said. That's true. Yeah, that's true. She could be lying. Yes. That's true. But it makes sense that Hades would want to shut him down. Yeah, no, it does. He just want to squash hope. Definitely does, but it also seems like something Corella would do to try to get leverage to get written back to life, which she did try to do. And she is very smart. We know this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Um, I mean... Henry's smarter. Henry's smart. Zelina just seems very scared in this episode. Zelina? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when they said that Ruby was down here. And she was like, I'm leaving. Well, she seemed <laughs> worried. I'm out of here. It's I'm not so much scared, but she seemed worried that, like, all the uh, progress she was making with her sister and, and everything and, and with everyone. It's a, it's a type of scared. Yeah. That, that it was going to get taken away, you know? So, she just seemed really... Well, I mean, Regina understands, you know, sometimes your past does catch up to you, no matter how far you run from it. Yeah. It will catch up with you sooner or later. Yeah. Zelina just hasn't learned that one yet. So even if she starts right now, starts trying to change her ways, there's still the past that's going to be catching up with her for, for a while now. Yeah. So. Um... Snow White got to go home. That was, yeah, I like. I I almost the, thought it was James that was gonna go home instead of David. Hmm. But then when they did that, and I was just like, oh, okay, never mind. Well, in there. order for James to go home instead of David, they would have to cross out James's name on his tombstone and write David. So then David would be stuck in the other world, and James could go. They could have, and, and since it's only Hades and it's, Hook, it seems well, like yeah. that has the power well, to do so. James could go. He doesn't have to have anything done in that that regard. Cuz he's not hitching, he's not hitching a ride. He's taking somebody's place. Yeah. Yeah. But something has to happen to take their place, either willing yeah. or otherwise. Cuz as long as James has his head his name on the tombstone, unless he goes up or down, you know, someone he's has gonna to stay there. He's stuck. A deal is like every other on soul. The- Scrawling on the tombstone was very childish. It was like, <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, hooks uh, yeah, what you gonna do? <laughs> well, no. Have, have you ever tried to carve granite? Well, not just that. Thinking? It's also it that magical. I even had magical. I, I get that, but have you ever tried to carve granite, let alone with tools? Right now, try doing it with a hook. Yeah, but and your off had... hand, your off arm, like he, that's not his dominant side. Right, it's true. Yeah, but he has had that hook for a very, very long time. He's never had to write a name. Uh, Nikki, are you left or right-handed? I'm, 
right-handed. Okay, you've had your left hand for a very, very long time. I want you to see you write your name perfectly with your left hand. Well, you're not going to see it right now, but I will. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, no, it's it's not, it's not going to happen. No, it was kind of cute. It was just yeah. like... It was the right choice, realistically. Personally, I think it was. It was sending yeah. snow home. Yeah, and and you know, amongst everything that was going on, I forgot that Hook's uh, Hook was still enchanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I completely overlooked that. I think Hades has too. Who? He's overlooked yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, Hades has definitely looked overlooked that. Oh yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, he's gonna find out Snow's gone, and he's gonna have a hissy fit. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, right now he's a little awkward. What if, uh... I want, I want him to lose his temper, like, in the movie, and the, just the hair. It's like, I'm cool, I'm, I'm cool, I'm okay. I want, I want the hair to turn a different color than blue. Like, does it in the movie, doesn't it turn red? Yes, when he yeah. gets very angry. Yeah, so that's, that's what I want to see. Yeah, I, that, yeah, that, I want to see that exactly. I, I want to see more than just his hair, though, because when he loses his p temper yeah, in like Disney the... film, it goes down his shoulders and on, on his back and stuff, and he's just like... Yeah. Yeah, the fire goes everywhere. Yeah. It's okay, I'm cool. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it so if Auntie M is down there. Well she's in the river know, now. I know she's she, in the she river ain't now. down there no more. When they said that when they said that and, and Ruby's down there, I was thinking, is Peter there? Peter Ruby's oh, boyfriend. The, yeah. Peter in the wall. Um, unless he moved on. If he has unfinished business, he's there. If he doesn't, then he's moved on. I, unless I he went to hell. If by a wolf being tied up to a tree, he might have some unfinished business. <laughs> we don't know if it's with Ruby. We don't know if he has any. He might not have had any. Yeah. It's, I, I, know, I just would love to see that come back. And, you know, I I don't know why. Well, just some, you know, what was this? First this episode season. 19? 18? This was 18, yeah. We don't really have that much time to have side characters come in like that. I mean, well, Peter I would was... like if when she was in, right, the like, world to have... yeah. we technically yeah. have four more weeks. Yeah. Right? Four more Five more weeks. episodes, four more weeks. The the finale is double episode. Yeah. But yeah, I would like why she was in the underworld to have yeah, run into that him. Would've... That would have been, or at him. least like read an article in a newspaper or something, or, like. or saw his his tombstone and seen if he passed over or not. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. It would have kind of... It would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dorothy wasn't the only one involved with a, uh, a sleeping curse this episode. We, uh, yeah. We, we had Belle talk to Zelina, and, you know, in, in trying to protect her child, she decided to just freeze herself in time. So, she went with a sleeping curse. It was stupid, but smart at the same time. It's one of those yeah. things, like, it's really stupid, but you know what? It's a smart thing because Hades can't touch it now. Yeah. And well, plus, it gives her less screen time because she's pregnant. And, <laughs> and I, I really, really love that she's accepted it, that her and Rumpel do not have true love. They don't really love each other. Like, that, I think... I'm like, finally, okay, you're not making the best decisions, but at least you understand something about what's mm. happening. Right. Yeah. She's pulling, like, the baby daddy card, though. She's like, you're yeah. going to get me out of this because you made me pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's like, look, you're not my, my true love's kiss. Uh, go get my father. Have him wake me up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did notice when she was um, pretending, or she was not pretending, when she was, like, going to throw up, she walked over to, you could, her jacket and you could see how just how pregnant she really yeah. was yeah. So I'm like, well I think it's something that yeah. I was, I was well, I knew, I think, we know she was pregnant the actress was pregnant oh yeah no no but I think it was something I didn't mention of, with the Belle episode mm -hmm. with the flashbacks because there was um, she was framed in a very specific way right. and it made me think of the actress from Walking Dead who plays Tara and she was talking about how she was really pregnant but they you know I couldn't tell. Yeah, they did everything they, they, they could to really cover it well. up. And yep. It's just mm -hmm. now that I know that how they film pregnant actresses when the characters aren't pregnant. Like I was, I looked for it with Belle, and I was like, "Oh, there it is, there it is, right there." And I think um, it was smart for them also, as, as not only just the story wise, but for when they sent Snow back, I was like, "Why would? Oh, I know why they're sending Snow back. <laughs> She's probably getting just as big." <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, she is pregnant again. You're right. <laughs> so we have two actresses on the on Once Upon a Time that are pregnant, and both of them are not going to have very minimal roles. <laughs> yeah. So at least not and, roles, and they, did they, good. they did it good. They did it. They did it. They did it in a good way. They did it a way that made sense instead of just saying, "Oh, you know, all the boxes or the." bags in front of them and stuff like that yeah. Oh, yeah and now like yes bell was stupid and smart all at the same time this episode and i kind of almost had this like little epiphany this episode of why you guys um hate rumple so much and i said why no but it, it's it's not so much rumple because rumple actually hasn't changed Rumpel made bad decisions way before Bell. But Rumpel's always yeah. made the same... Season one, Rumpel's been making those same decisions. He's never changed. So well, the, what, the what, what has changed is adding Bell to the equation. I I've think never liked it's him. not true saying Rumpel hasn't changed. His core has not changed. You're right. Uh, it's how he sees himself and how he acts around his core. Mm -hmm. That's changed. Well, because I think... And when he was trying to be good... You know, when Zelina was the, the actual bad guy, um, you know, he was trying and I really liked him then because he was trying. But what we didn't know was that his core didn't change. He didn't change in his core. Right. So what I think it is, is Rumpel's been Rumpel and then Belle comes along and tried to change him. And there was some resistance and it didn't work. So we're left where we started with Rumpel. And, and I don't like either of them, so... Right, but you came into this show liking Rumpel, so... That, that's where I'm, I'm confused through it all. Be because he showed capacity to change. Right, but I think he's still going to. I think it's still going to happen in the end. And I, I think something's going to happen, like and Belle's I father is going to get sent to hell or move on, one of the two... And Rumpel's not going to have a choice. He's going to have to do the right thing. But doing the right thing doesn't, equal doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have true love. Boom. Right. I didn't. I'm not even saying that that's necessarily going to give them true love. Whatever. Oh, but I think Rumpel's going to come around and do the right thing, and it's going to fulfill the prophecy that Merlin predicted that the Dark One's power can be used for light. So I think there's still time for Rumpel to come around. But I think this is all just part of that journey of his resistance to change, like his his need for power. He's so stuck in the 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 mindset that the Dark One's power is only dark power, and there's no yeah. way to change that because that's the knowledge he 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 came with, right? So he's not gonna believe some random wizard that comes along that he meets for you know all of an hour, you random know. Wizard. I'm just saying. Rumpel's been the Dark One for 900 <laughs> years. Random wizard. I'm saying he's been the Dark One for 900 years, so to him, it's a random wizard. Right? Merlin was only around for how long? Longer than that. For 900 years? To Rumpel? Rumpel and, and Merlin were together for 900 years? Not together. No, that's what I'm saying. He came Rumpel along Merlin and was in his Merlin? life for like an hour. I know Merlin's just as old as the Dark One. He's no, older. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying comes along and they meet for like an hour and he's like, oh, this fucking random wizard guy is going to tell me that I can use my powers for good and still I'm have them. say it again. Random wizard. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I get everything you're saying, Dom. I completely understand. I just don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not about what you have to say. That's not what I meant. I mean, I don't care about where Rumpel's story is going. Like I've gotten to this point where I'm just like, I flip a table. I want to see flip that. Table, Can you flip it real flip quick? Table. Just flip it real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm but I, I think... I if I flip this table. <laughs> I think he's going to come around, and I think we're definitely going to see Merlin in the underworld need, before this is over. I need more Merlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Merlin is flawed. I need more random wizards in my life. Exactly. <laughs> You're, like, hurting Nikki's soul by saying that. Yeah. Like, I can see it. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna die right now of of pain and torment and she's gonna be stuck in the underworld because of her unfinished business. Her unfinished 
I don't care that there's no phone booth anymore. I will haunt the fuck out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you live and die. We'll find a way. Yeah. Um, I can see that. I mean, and, and finally, the, the only last thing I have to talk about, we'll see if you guys have anything else after this, is uh, Henry actually consciously wrote a story this time. Yeah. Well, you see, I think he was just channeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But he focused, was start, you know, started writing. He might not have known when he was writing when he started, but like he focused and he wrote the story the way it's supposed to be written. He, Without all the sass. He sass. Had such a smile on his face when he was writing. I think he was completely knowing of what he was doing. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Minus the teenage sass. Yeah. Sass and yeah. So you guys have anything else? I'm hoping I, that... I, I'm just saying, I'm hoping now that Snow's out and David's here that he, him and his brother have a showdown or something. It's gonna happen. It, next it better happen. It's happening. It's, it's happening next episode. <laughs> it was in the promo! It's happening next episode! Mm-hmm. Next episode is called Sisters. Now that Hades and Zelina are reunited, Hades tells Zelina that he wants a future with her outside of the underworld. All she needs to do is heal his heart with true love's kiss so they, oh, sh- so that they can leave the underworld and trap the heroes there for eternity. I, I, mm, mm, I can taste the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, like? you like the taste of bullshit? No, <laughs> no, I hate it, but I can taste it. I You're like, mwah, mwah, yes, mm, <laughs> delicious. No, um, it was more like a Jontron sass, more of a, than a, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about! God! When Regina yeah. overhears of this plan, she enlists Cora's help to find a way to separate Zelina from Hades. However, Cora again. however, Cora reveals a family secret that could change Regina and Zelina's lives forever. I love family secrets. What oh, is God. this, an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. synopsis? Meanwhile, oh, David shit. finally meets James, only to realize that his twin is determined to seek revenge on him for stealing the life he could have had. James just needs to get over himself. He needs to crawl into his giant peach and roll off a fucking cliff. He just needs to get over himself. It was it had nothing to do with David. I swear to God, if James is, e- is even holding a peach in his head when he sees David... <laughs> I'm going to just scream. I really hope he's eating I a want, peach. I want them to get into like a teenage girl like pulled hair slap fight and uh, uh If they uh, had longer Cruella, hair, sure. Cruella just be like, "Oh yes." <laughs> <laughs> Off to the side just like, mm. <laughs> If they start pulling their hair and they have like no hair to grab onto, that is going to well, be the have, funniest thing. They have hair. That's Barely. Enough, that, that's enough hair for a fistful. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Pull it from the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it's just gonna be insane. I wanna. I don't know. I like to know what James is. You know. Deal well, is. I and mean, we kind of know what his uh, deal is, but what his unfinished business kind of is. It is oh, yeah, uh, yeah. brother. It has something to do with his brother. And I have a feeling he's gonna help him move on. Yeah. yeah. I think so. I'm hoping maybe we see Jacqueline and she gets all pissed off at him for not. I would love to see Jacqueline. And she gets all pissed off at him. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, Daniela Del Castello Locatelli said in chat, I think Zelina has a big dilemma in her hands right now, uh, being wicked and embrace her love for Hades or be a hero and have her kid and family. Um, I definitely, definitely think that's the case. Um, I disagree with what she says next, though. Uh, she says Zelina will get her confidence back only when she chooses Hades. I don't believe that. Because I also think Hades is playing the fuck out of her. Could so be. if she chooses Hades, then she's actually probably going to lose all her confidence, especially if he's playing her. She also said that Hades and Zelina together could be the most deadly threat that the Storybrooke heroes have faced thus far. I you see, that would be fun. Definitely agree with that. That would be fun. But I yeah. don't think that, like, er- at every turn, I'm like, Hades, you, you piece of shit. You're full of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a he feeling that if Hades... Others. I have a feeling if Hades screws Zelina over, she's going to go batshit crazy and just destroy him. Yeah. Uh, because this would be the first time she actually opens her heart to someone and he fucking crushes it. Yeah. She's gonna be pissed. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see, like, full-on rage from her. Like, that'd be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Finally, uh, Daniela uh, says, I-, I hope we get to see Robin and Regina scenes together as Emma and Hook scenes together. The romantic ones. I miss them. Yeah. Last, last couple episodes, we haven't had very romantic scenes so yeah yeah it's been 
you know. I mean, they're underworld. in the underworld. It's not exactly romantic, not very romantic. down there. Why not? So, it's not romantic. Are you, you can't serious? have a picnic in the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> That's gonna happen. I hope there's a picnic in the graveyard now. Oh god. I mean, they could have had a, a decent meal at Auntie M's, but uh, <laughs> who knows what's happening there now. Yeah. Uh, you ladies have anything else for this episode? <sighs> nah. No. Nah. Just, we're just waiting. What are they going to do? Right now, I don't have no clue where they're going for the finale. Not yeah. even an inkling what they're going to have happen. They're, I know they're going to Wonderland. Come out of the underworld, but... Un the underworld is actually Wonderland. Peach Dragon is going to fly down to the underworld, pick up the heroes, and take them home. Peach Dragon, <laughs> so you mean Maleficent's husband? Um, yes. <laughs> Damn. Which I'm on board for. That would be awesome. Clearly, you, I think you were the one that ripped out it the, the most. What? <laughs> Peach Dragon, when I, when I mentioned Elliot. But he's not a you, like, watch the trailer for the new movie coming oh, out, and you're yeah. like, no, I'm done. Nope. Fine. <laughs> you, you were like, nope. Yeah, let's not, let's not do that, because... Well, Maleficent's a dragon and a human, and Elliot wasn't a human at he, all. He could be. This is once upon a time, man. Yeah. Uh, he could be stuck. A person he could a be mouse. stuck in dragon form. So, yeah. Anyway, that's our show. Nikki, where can the people find you? Where, where can they find me? Yeah. On Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Cleo, where can the people find you? They can find me on at Cleomoto on Twitter, Twitch, and especially Pinterest, posting everything about Bucky for the next five months. Mm. <laughs> Rachel, where can the people find you? They can find me at Twitter at Savannah17. Excellent. You can find me down below at Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. Do 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 do. Phenomenon. <laughs> You, you can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, MySpace, and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Till next week. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Ciao. Don't get taken away by a green tornado. Nope. Or have a teddy bear picnic in the cemetery. Huh. And that's the way the teddy bears had their picnic. No, it's not.